Okay. Um, Pete, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, as Pete said, my name is Brian Davis. I'm the uh, Ag and Natural Resource Agent here in Wilson County, uh, cent South Central Texas, just south of San Antonio. Uh, be talking about uh, some agriculture applications uh, for the smartphones and tablets. Uh, hopefully, everybody across the state looks like had some great rains. Uh, I know that uh, for a lot of our producers, we're out of the fields right now, just kind of attending to water gaps myself uh, this morning. I actually got to start my day off working uh, water gaps uh, on one of our lower creek bottoms. But uh, getting into the agriculture apps and smartphones, um, I've been using the smartphone and the applications for several years now. Uh, after talking to some of the different colleagues and everything, I really wanted to uh, um, shows some of the ease. Uh, being a county extension agent, it seems like we're always on the go and always busy. And as I started sharing with producers some of the different uh, applications that I use daily or weekly or even uh, quarterly on my smartphones, it was amazing at how some of them would share and, and how it's changing. So uh, with anything, as we, we start, um, I always like to start with a disclaimer uh, because with apps and with technology, um, uh, I've compiled kind of a list uh, which I'll share later on um, and uh, it's kind of a resource. Uh, I have clientele producers that come into my office every single day, other extension agents and specialists that I work with and like with uh, education and science and technology, it's every day is changing. Um, every day we can turn on uh, our computers and our smartphones and we'll see a new app that's up or one that's uh, crashing. And so as we see is uh, there is a variety of utilities and functions. Um, there's a, even our uh, intended users uh, constantly changing and their, their education. Uh, what I've appreciated a lot of the smartphone and the apps, it seems like uh, sitting down in large classrooms and talking to uh, individuals in group settings, kind of like our traditional education, has uh, changed. Uh, whenever I get a new iPad or iPhone uh, or any kind of a smartphone, uh, it doesn't come with a long list of instructions or apps. It's typically one person talking to another person or one person reading. Uh, I might be reading a review on it. and. Uh, some of the greatest joys that I get is sharing a, a new app or an app that I've found very functional and you're talking one-on-one -on -one with a producer or a coworker, and so it's that more one-on-one -on -one interaction and then when we do have these educational programs like we have today uh, where you try to spread uh, some of that knowledge. But as we talk about it, one of the questions uh, I want to uh, get right off the bat is how many different uh, yes sir as uh, are, as they answer the questions uh, let me say this if y'all have any questions uh, throughout the webinar apps, apps feel free to type on the chat pod uh, mr davis will be answering those questions can we take a real quick survey of that So as we kind of sit here and, and as y'all are, we're kind of polling y'all and nice little function that we have available here. It looks like that uh, about 89% or almost 90% of y'all currently use different apps uh, where just less than or right around 10% do not. So uh, it's, and this is not uncommon for some of the different, uh, I'd say being a technology uh, webinar uh, they expect probably uh, a lot of the people using this technology, uh, especially uh, like Dr. Morgan Russell that's on uh, a smartphone right now, has these type of apps. And uh, But we do have producers that we're working with, and a lot of times as I sit down and talk with them, uh, it's amazing how we can open their eyes and maybe for uh, an older clientele that we, we have in our industry. Uh, but as I'll... I also say in our disclaimer at the bottom, many of the apps reference uh, that we're going to go through 
are also available in web-based formats and for those that are not using the, the, the smartphones. Uh, but <clears throat> as we get, get going here, um, a lot of our apps as we use are in tablets and smartphones. We have kind of an Apple version and the Android systems. Um, one thing I refer to all the time is this is kind of like the uh, Ford and the Chevrolet out there. The Android system, Microsoft, um, that, uh, and actually my wife, she has uh, an Android type phone that she has her apps that she's very precious of. And then I've, for many years, have been using an iPhone. And uh, there's always a constant new release, uh, your iPads, your mini ones. And there's a ton of other different tablet options out there. Uh, one thing is, uh, it, it's been fun for me to watch uh, how these two markets have worked. Like I said earlier, kind of like the Ford and the Chevrolets out there. We're going to do one more survey right quick and see how many of y'all uh, are, are working off maybe an Apple system or an Android system, maybe an iPad or some other uh, type. If you don't mind typing in, and that will help me with uh, our talk as of. Uh, which systems uh, we work off of. And if uh, you sit here, it's, uh, everybody's coming in. We do have uh, one individual with an iPad, and, and several people might have iPads, but um, as well as a smartphone. But... Uh, Right now, it looks like we have more iPhones and Androids on the systems that people have worked in. Uh, thank you, Pete, for putting that up there. Uh, like I said, uh, I'm going to be more, uh, um, I guess, biased towards the iPhone system. Um, my my wife can, uh, from time to time, beat me over the head with her uh, Android-type system. But uh, it's amazing that uh, certain apps, they work better with, uh, certain phone systems, we we see that, and um, and if you look at it on a national level, you look at a lot of different surveys, and from time to time I'll look at that. Uh, there there tends to be more Android systems out there than Apple's in the United States, and and when you look at it on a world market, uh, Android it heavily over uh, over rides probably the popularity of the iPhone systems. But with this, kind of as we get into the, the apps, uh, looking at the Apple, it's more of an ISO uh, operating system where the Android uses the Google Play. Uh, this kind of breaks down to where you might go and, and get your different apps uh, where the Androids will go through the Google system. Uh, the iTunes and the App Store is where we get a lot of the different Apple systems that kind of like I said that plays out as of just your different preference uh, and the utilities for your different systems um, and each one even the same uh, apps out there there are there are uh, over 1.5 million apps in both of these type um, stores whether you're go talking uh, Google Play or app uh, that are available for download and it's amazing that how many come online every day. Uh, as we talk about the apps and the applications for use on smartphone and tablets, know that uh, it is designed and apps are typically designed to provide easy access to information and news. Um, they help with instant in-field uh, recordings, um, daily tasks. Uh, I tell a lot of our producers, it's amazing that the access that your smartphones have to you just to mainly speed up what has been done in the past. Um, and then for a lot of producers and myself, as well as uh, uh, people in the field of edu education, it's kind of the new black book and the number two pencil. Uh, a colleague of mine told me that one time, and it's amazing more and more how much I use the notes section and save stuff. And with the ease of backing it up on the iCloud uh, from that and then emailing it to myself or uh, sending it to somebody else, it really helps with that information sharing and not like the uh, uh, black book that you might fall off in the water trough uh, with my smartphone. That's why I have a waterproof, life proof case on it, just so that uh, if it does fall out of my pocket after the rains that we had last night, that uh, I don't lose that information. With anything is what I try to tell our, tell our clientele. 
research before you download. Um, there's a lot of different uh, apps out there that you can go when you go to the App Store and like anything on that's web-based or in the internet, you have to know your source. Kind of like whenever you go to the coffee shop in the morning and visit with uh, um, your neighbors, uh, you know who sits there and tells, well, I got two and a half inches, as well as the individuals that really kept up with 1.52 or um, you know who around there might stretch that truth a little bit. So know the resources whenever you look at that. Uh, what apps that are maybe extension or state uh, uh, base, educational base type, um, the different companies uh, that are out there. Um, also on these apps, it's really important to know um, what kind of data are they using. Uh, whenever you download them, it's gonna act, uh, ask you maybe if uh, it can access uh, maybe your contacts, um, know, know a little bit about that um, app before you uh, download it. And if you're concerned with that, maybe not let it have uh, access or, or let it share some of the, that data and information. Um, but then also know that typically at, at certain times you can also, um, just as quickly as you downloaded it, you can get rid of it. With a lot of apps nowadays, and, and for me, I think one thing that's very important is uh, the batteries and how quick can an app be running in the background? Does the battery typically run and does it drain that uh, drain down your battery? Uh, so kind of keep tabs on the battery life when you open up it and then also know at the same time uh, how easy it is to be able to close those. Uh, maybe like with my iPhone, I can double click that home key pop up and then just swoop out and close out any apps that might be running in the background. Uh, and sometimes you might do that several times of the day, be it on an iPad, iPhone, and, or an Android type system. As we also talk about apps, I think it's very important that we mention about um, free versus paid. Um, a lot of the different apps that are out there are free. Uh, a lot of the producers I visit with they want to know what can we get for free. Yeah, we've paid a lot of money for this phone. Um, the great part about apps nowadays, there are a lot of apps out there that are free and paid, and you can they'll they'll catch you with a free version. You find a lot of use, a lot of activity. You want to have maybe more resources, be able to do a little bit more with that app, but to upgrade, they'll have a paid version. It's amazing, we'll pay $5 at Starbucks for a cup of coffee, but we won't pay $1.99 for uh, an app that probably could ease our daily uh, activities or get us get us through maybe record keeping a little bit quicker. And so with that, a lot of times I'll be looking at free apps, even myself and for a lot of our producers. As we get into kind yes, of sir, uh, uh, start talking about the different apps, as we get, Get going here. I wanted to give a chance for anybody that might have questions up up here. Yes, um, uh, if they'll, they'll go ahead and type in their email address on the chat pod. I can capture those and uh, uh, email the Charlie said the PowerPoint uh, presentation. A copy of the PowerPoint for reference. Um, we, will you be able to do that to everybody afterwards? Okay, thank you very much, Pete. <clears throat> I've I have kind of set up a couple of a different uh, parts throughout the talk that will stop and, and hand, handle different questions. As I get into the um, different apps, I'm gonna kind of cover some of the different apps that are out there, as well as we're gonna also I'm gonna take you through um, some screenshots of what I kind of consider those those sacred five to seven apps of mine that uh, seem to really work with a lot of producers, a lot of my coworkers, um, that hopefully get everybody into some different ones. As we look at different apps and, and we're talking about apps, there's also functions on these phones, even just simple taking pictures. I think uh, before we talk about a lot of the different apps, um, I think a lot of us in the field of education uh, understand the value of being able to take a good clear picture of a plant um, or maybe a fungal disease 
and be able to send it to a um, source. And a lot of times, I think people that, and, and definitely some of my producers, they get wrapped up in taking pictures of their grandkids or of their new tractors and all that, that they forget that they do have some great functions on these phones, like being able to take a picture of maybe an insect or a plant and sending it off to uh, just simply texting it to a specialist or to an extension agent and being able to make those functions. So a lot of times when I give talks, I'll start off with that, those first functions in, in that note function. Weather apps were probably um, where, where we start looking at. Uh, everybody wants to know what the weather is, changing weather. It's amazing at some of the different programs that I'm at that uh, you'll be getting there and you'll get set up and then all of a sudden bad weather comes in and maybe have a speaker getting ready to start talking and then the weather alert system will go off and uh, you might have literally 15 to 20 phones uh, across a room just all of a sudden start beeping because uh, um, severe weather coming in and, and it's right there you can already see the individuals in the room that are using these kind of apps to try to get that instant weather information. There's a lot of great sources out there, the Weather Channel, the Weather Bug. Um, some do cost at, uh, um, and, and with any of these apps, like anything in, in life, everybody has different preferences. Some people like four-wheel drive, some people do better with two-wheel drive vehicles. Well, that's why I tell people, look at a lot of the different weather, what, weather apps. Um, you can look at their ratings. I, I do take uh, and look at those ratings when I download the different apps and then also visit from time to time with other people. One app that I'll demonstrate here later on that I really like is um, this, uh, uh, what we call the WindFinder app. And, and I'll show that, uh, that that's really nice uh, for for me in some of the different applications when I start spraying my different fields and everything. As we start looking at, at apps, there's uh, the apps out there that um, um, when we talked about the weather, but then there's also out there for insect disease management, um, the different weed ID apps. A lot of people uh, that thirst for the knowledge uh, and in this, at first, several years ago, it was really difficult to find some really nice apps that can cover the different weeds, uh, constantly changing. Uh, there are some great uh, resources on the educational side, as well as also the different businesses that are getting involved in a lot of this, uh, the insect and, and disease, a lot of different companies go out there. And then once you identify maybe a, a weed or an insect, that also will follow up in what maybe uh, treatments that you can look at. Uh, you have to be very cautious because if it's a maybe a app by a company, the only options that they're going to be able to get, that they'll typically give you is maybe their own products. Where if it's an app from a not uh, uh, maybe a nonprofit or an educational type app, maybe from a university, then a lot of those apps are followed up with different maybe mechanical, biological, as well as chemical um, um, apps. When we start also looking at the different apps out there, um, animal health apps, it's amazing at, um, in the health industry, how many apps are out there that can help you from literally keeping, keeping your own health records to your animal health records. And so this right here just kind of shows some of the different ones that we have from insect for uh, maybe the corn, animal health, some different weed IDs, and I'll display some of these apps here shortly. Some of the different plant ID apps, Leaf Snap that we see uh, quite a bit. Um, seems like more people are using that. Uh, Leaf Snap for tree identification. Know that there's some apps out there that uh, work on certain phones, like the Brit app will work on certain phones. Uh, operating systems than other ones. Uh, just because it has a high rating, you need to understand maybe not, it, it might not be for you. So keep looking uh, for the app that works. Um, one app that I really enjoy uh, being a county agent, we get a lot of questions of, hey, what kind of 
pond plants do I have? Uh, what, how do I control the weeds in my pond? And so even within that, we have apps like Aqua Plants, um, one app that Texas A&M Agrolath Extension, where it can give you, identify that uh, plant, the management uh, from that systems, and really um, can speed up a lot of uh, a lot of time whenever you're trying to identify certain plants. Uh, different apps out there also for pesticide sprayer applications that uh, a huge long list whenever you start looking at that um, from especially from the industry uh, for me as a producer as well even like I uh, look at the bottom of there the T-Jet app um, I'm constantly changing out different sprays different spray uh, tips uh, diff running different products and I can go to I have a list of different uh, nozzles and I can go to that T-Jet and it tells me what nozzles I need to be spraying for a certain amount of pressure uh, in a certain field as well as the coverage that I need and so really a lot of that goes back to our spree, uh, our ease that helps producers um, there, there's a tremendous amount out there is where I'm trying to get to probably the record keeping as well as maps is one that I see a lot in a field of agriculture, uh, the maps uh, being able to look at maybe change of time of forage, and then also being able to look at maybe urbanization encroachment uh, with different apps that I also use. Uh, the ISRI, A S R I. Uh, it also, uh, I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. Uh, also, some people call it ArcGIS. Uh, I can use that to go in and work with a producer on measuring fields, uh, fence lines. There are different apps out there. This is just one that I use. And for a lot of the different apps that are out there, I think that's really important to know of is that um, there might be two or three apps do the same thing. If you don't like how one field, uh, one app works in a field, you might find more ease in, the, in another app. Uh, some of the different cropping and production soil apps out there that we see a lot, the soil web to um, identify what kind of soils, if that soil's best suited for um, stock tank management, is it what kind of soils uh, you can also identify maybe what are some of the native grasses that you would see there, crop management apps, and then soil mapping uh, nutrients. Uh, in a lot of the different other apps that are out there. At this time, I'm going to kind of go into what I call the show and show and tell mode. Uh, it seems like a lot of time for um, I can sit there and, and talk to our producers, as you can see here in this picture. And it's not until you get out in the field one on one and and, and talk to your colleagues and and actually show them, and they can actually see it. Uh, this is a uh, a talk uh, several years ago where I was trying to talk with producers about how to uh, determine how much amount of forage they had out there in the pasture and it wasn't until we got down and actually looked at uh, you can talk all day long that you want to maybe if that try to get that producer to understand 500 pounds of forage or a thousand pounds of forage but it's not too I haven't seen they any. can actually cut it and see it in their hands and that's where this next part will kind of go into we're going to we're going to go off and start showing some of the different apps. Anybody had any question up, up to this point? Okay. Um, the first app that I want to uh, start off talking with is, uh, and I said it would show this, is a WinFinder app. Uh, usually at this show and tell point, what I really like to do is hook up my iPhone or my iPad uh, in a room and we would walk through each one of these uh, screenshots and, and actually show you how to pull it up. Uh, the, and like I said, at the end, we'll, we'll send out uh, some of the different apps that I have. But um, the first screen that uh, you'll see in, in the screen here is uh, left to right that will pop up on your screen uh, whenever you open this app. And the WinFinder app, actually, if you... Uh, um, I'll move this up here. It'll show up on your smartphone or your tablet uh, as uh, that symbol. But a, as the screen shows up, you'll have this, uh, these four things to be able to choose from uh, to reference uh, either a map, 
view that will give you a, a map of the United States and the world with some of the different points on it. Um, also, this whenever you open up this app, it will identify if, if you allow access to your um, in your smartphone. Uh, it will identify what different weather stations are around you. You can also search by name for different weather stations or also uh, by a country. And when you search by name, you can do that by uh, maybe city names. Uh, for me, what I, I wind up using a lot of times is I will do the around me uh, and have it search for weather stations around me, which the next screenshot is this one that shows it's going to ask, is it by distance or by wind speed? What you have to determine as a individual is, do you want to know what stations are the closest to the furthest around you or what stations by wind speed? And it will rank them by wind speed that are around you. And I've been able to, I find that either way uh, that you ask for it, 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 it really has, uh, it can help with some of the differences. Uh, this one next screenshot I asked, I asked it to do it around me, and it says up here in the screen that it's by near me. And then uh, whenever I took this screenshot uh, yesterday, our, my closest weather station is Calaveras Lake Dam. And it's 13 miles, and it'll tell you it's 13 miles northwest of your present position. And then it, what it does is it goes around you and look, and then it ranks down there all the different weather stations and you can look at the look at each one you can click on those but uh, if, if you are afraid that maybe some weather's coming in from the north and you know that you see that there's uh, uh, 50 miles north of my location is a weather station I can actually look at that weather station at what current weather that they have and um, from that kind of a standpoint uh, as we look here and, and as we look at that near me and, and we're looking here at the, the near me by wind speed instead of by location uh, at this next screenshot and it gives me the, the weather stations that have the highest wind all the way down to the calmest and I can see that I have a lot of winds north of me so if I might be doing a controlled uh, or prescribed fire and I'm trying to do some type of pre prescribed burning that I know that 40 miles north of me, I'm ha I'm having a lot of lot of wind, and so maybe I need to be watching what the weather's doing. But if if the wind's coming from the north or coming from the south, uh, in this case coming from the north, uh, please be be cautious with as that gets closer and closer to us knowing that uh, maybe over at Castroville it's a little calmer as it shows um, down here in our, in our, as you work down uh, to some of these closer airports and everything. And so I see different um, advantage for this because uh, with this app you have like the direction of the wind, the wind speed, uh, also the current temperature is what it will give you. Um, in certain, uh, when, you, when you start looking at certain weather stations uh, like this one right here Randolph Brooks Air Force Base this is actually one of my favorites that I have saved I actually have uh, some lease land and then also my own property that's uh, not far from uh, Randolph Brooks there uh, so I'll look at this weather station quite a bit and then this breaks it down by time and if you look as it progresses throughout the day on about every three hours it's giving you a uh, estimated wind direction uh, estimated wind speed your temperature as well as also the weather if it's going to be cloudy uh, rainy uh, from this and you can scroll down this screen and it will have seven days of data so you can look look over it for me as a county extension agent this is pretty handy because really quick if I see that uh, I might have had an educational program on Saturday and it got canceled and I can actually go out and maybe spray some weeds or if I need to go out there and spray a fungicide or spray for fall armyworms, I can scroll from Tuesday when I took this screenshot all the way through for the next seven days and see what time, if, if there's a time on Saturday that 
the weather would be favorable for me to start planning. This is just another one of those tools in my toolbox for being able to plan for uh, being able to spray. A lot of my producers like to have that ease. What's nice about this is in a couple of clicks, if you look back here, once they open this up and they cl click probably three times, they're at they're they're able to see. And, and if they have it saved as their favorites, it'd probably be two clicks. And they can kind of see their weather conditions that they can kind of scroll through for seven days looking out throughout the whole day. Is there time in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening that they could go out and spray that would be favorable conditions uh, for them? Or if they're being able to work livestock, or should they be concerned with maybe rains coming in for flooding? Uh, another one of the uh, nice features about this app is it actually can also you can go through and you can see the wind speed and it will graph it for you uh the one of the uh other things they'll do it'll show a picture uh on a map of where that weather station is um now with this app um if you're looking at some of uh maybe a, a different country some of those pins i i don't trust the reliability of them uh as of the pictures but uh, most of them here in the continental United States work extremely well. Um, also, if you're looking at a weather station, uh, my wife, she is a avid fisherwoman. Uh, she loves, uh, loves the coast and being down there in Corpus Christi next to Pete. And whenever we pull up the uh, weather station there for Corpus, it has the tides, uh, when high tide is, low tide, and as well as the waves. It'll have... Uh, um, what the waves are and I know that if if the wave is over uh, six inches if they're talking that it's three to four foot waves that I'm going to get sick if I go fishing with her if it's an inch to half a foot then then I'm not going to get so sick I need to stay in the kiddie pool and so uh, those kind of applications really help out and make it really nice another app one that uh, a lot of my producers really love the second one I want to hit on is this arc gis or isri um whenever we look look at it and and identify it it comes up here with this icon and uh a lot of our producers like it uh this is some screenshots that i have off of my ipad uh and understand that with a lot of our different apps the way it works with an ipad might not be the exact same way that it works with an iphone um, this is one of those apps that uh, um, whenever you do the iPad, uh, the setup's a little different than with an iPhone. And uh, whenever you click on it, it'll show a picture of the United States. It'll identify uh, typically where you're located, and that shows up as a blue dot. Uh, if, you, if you look here, um, that blue dot will identify uh, my position uh, in the United States. If it doesn't come up, I'll go down here and I'll click right here on the um, kind of a, I call it a telescope. Pete, uh, what's the actual name, proper name for, for that symbol right there? And Pete's even at a loss for words. But what we'll do is typically by kick, clicking on that right there, we'll be able to identify or, or it pulls up your position. What I have done and what I like about this app here is um, you can click and pull up uh, your aerial views. You, you gives you several different um, um, options. If you click up here on these different tabs uh, on your iPad or iPhone, sometimes on your iPhone you have to go to a maps and go to a legend and you can pull up a topo, you can put all up satellite imagery, um, you can pull up different um, quadrants on electricity, um, whatever kind of views. A lot of views that I, I pull up are the satellite imagery. It gives you different options whenever you go to your ma maps in the overview. Can, you can change those out there. But we have our two main functions here. One is that you'll see there that I'm pointing to is more of a ruler. And what you can do is with your finger, you'll be able to click on a couple of points and we'll show and it will give you a distance measure or also it can also measure the area 
and the image quality uh, is excellent. And what I've done here is took a screenshot where I went in. Uh, this is actually a producer that I work with uh, here in uh, just southwest of Floresville. And um, this works out real well when you wanted to measure the distance of that uh, center pivot where you can take and, and literally measure um, the, for the distance. You click on one point, the, the first point might be uh, this red dot, and the second point is the center. And then what you can do is you can get the distance. It measures it in feet. You can change that to kilometers, meters, miles, nautical miles, yards, um, depending on what you want just by hitting the uh, feet. Um, whenever you tap on that, it opens up this list and will let you change that list to whatever your needs are. Um, if I, we wanted to, we could actually measure the distance from a, a fence line, um, distance of a road. But um, remember, this does not give you the option of going up and down hills from that standpoint. Also, another thing that we can also do with this field is measure the um, measure around a field and measure the area. If you look here, what we did is we asked it to measure the area and then what I was able to do is go around with my finger and however close you want to get uh, uh, blow up that picture, you can just hit those points everywhere you see a blue dot. That was a point that I hit with my finger. And what we were trying to do with this producer was just measure how much area, how many acres were directly under that center pivot. Um, of course, he wanted to leave out all, all that outside area. We could just as easily have ran uh, that area. And then, of course, he can see right there it's 89.66 acres. We could, with just a click of a button or, or clicking on any of these other tabs, we could figure out the square feet, yards, the acres, the miles. Uh, gives us a lot of different options, um, uh, hectares, um, a, a lot of information here in a very short amount of time. Uh, a lot of times I like to use this if I'm going to a, a new field and wondering how many acres are in there to spray or if a producer has uh, in their grazing livestock and we need to know how large of a, how much acreage is in there. What is a stocking rate? You can calculate a stocking rate really quickly here. Um, I also have some producers that from time to time they're like, hey, my neighbor said that that's a 40 acre field that uh, he wants me to bail. And I think it's 30 acres. Well, with this kind of app, they can find out really quick how many acres is in there that uh, as a quick reference material. And so uh, this was just showing that without the pull down drop menu where we measured the area, the um, pull up this arrow here on this page. If you see the green arrow up top, that's the actual uh, what I hit, um, the tool that I hit to get the measure of the area. This other one, whenever I click on it, it measures for the, for just the distance. Um, also, whenever you click on the maps, it'll tell you what your imagery current view is, but you can change that to topo, um, topography. It seems like uh, I have a lot of people that want to use that, or you can pull in uh, soil maps. You can also pull in the uh, uh, different USGS um, uh, maps that they have available. It's a it's a great list of great use. Another app that I like to show today, one is uh, that uh, a lot of our producers use. Um, a little different one than the weather and the mapping is the Compendium of Veterinary Products, uh, the CP, CVP app. Um, working with a lot of producers in agriculture fields that have livestock. Um, especially with uh, the different antibiotics that are out there or maybe pain management for livestock. Uh, this is, seems to be a really nice free app that we use quite a bit. Um, whenever I start up, the first uh, thing that you'll see, actually once you download, you'll actually get this small icon here. It opens up to this first screen and then it'll drop you to this screenshot right here where you can search by uh, the product, 
number or kind of search it by uh, name. You can search it by manufacturer, product, the ingredients. Also, one thing that I like about this app is withdrawal times. A lot of times in our profession as county extension agents, we're working with 4-H, uh, 4-Hers and livestock producers that maybe have had a sick animal and they want to know how long that they have to uh, keep that animal before they can sell it uh, if, if they're needing to, to get rid of it. And so this provides us a, a tool that's at our hands. And so as I pulled this up and, and clicked on the product, uh, as you can see right here, it pulled up the products number to Z. And it starts with one, and it goes all the way down. Uh, one thing that uh, we use quite a bit in our area is uh, we, we, we give some dextrose injections. That's there, and it, you can pull up that product. Once you see that product, uh, one also, the Vision 2020, as you look right there, it pulls up the name, Vision 7, Whisper. We're, we typically give this to a lot of the young calves at about three months of age, and then we'll revaccinate at Weenie. It talks about that product, what it's used for, um, the the use of pink eye, and then also that uh, it can be used in beef cattle. It can be used dairy. The route of administration that it's for subcutaneous use. How much it, you dose it in healthy cattle. Uh, two milliliters, and then that you can repeat 21 and 28 days. And so uh, with that, you have the withdrawal times for the meat, 21 days uh, to hold off. You literally have that whole label that you can use there, the use and dosage at your fingertips. Um, we found this very useful for a lot of the different products that you can search, um, search for. Uh, if you start looking at the label, and we look at the label here on this 2020, and we switch from use and dosage to label, it tells you a lot of the same information, but then also gives you the manufacturer. It gives you, if you need their service departments, if you have other questions, if you have somebody that had, a, or a livestock had a re reaction to it, uh, that's where really a lot of times the antidotes come in, what to use if they have a reaction to that as well. And so, a ton of information right there for a producer or, or a consumer that they had right there at their hands uh, that really helps out quite a bit. Um, also, when, when I was talking about withdrawal times and the charts, uh, that's what these two window shots are. I just went up and choose, chose the withdrawal time, and you can see uh, right here where uh, it shows withdrawal times. You can pick any one of these species that's available. And then with that, you're looking here uh, at the next screenshot where I picked sheep and goats. And then you can scroll down, look at the different animals, look at uh, if we want to take one, this Barvac 7, who it's made by. It's intended for sheep, labeled for sheep, where the anthrax spore vaccine is for sheep and goats. It's subcutaneous. And then the meat withdrawal, 42 days. All that right there for you. Um, if you're not sure what SC stands for, then you go up here to the legend and you can see that it's for subcutaneous injections. If you're wanting to know what different one, you can just click on the different um, letters here to scroll quicker through the different products that are available. Really for animal health, works extremely well. Um, as we go through some of the other ones, Soul Web that you can pull up on your iPhones, uh, that uh, whenever you look here, the first screenshot, you can actually look for accuracy and you can set the accuracy of your phones on uh, or your iPads. And then also when you click get my location right there, this is the location, uh, the actual soil that we have at the location where I'm, where I was standing. It gives you the um, classification as well as also it goes through the different soil classifications that you can have for a lot of landowners. Um, they're wanting to know this kind of information. Once you click on the soil there, 
it gives you all this other information as of your orders, your subgroups from there. Uh, the land classifications, if you're looking uh, over here, it gives you a lot of that different information. Some of your uh, hy hydrology and erosion ratings. A lot of our producers, they like this information towards the end. They, they can see what plants that are recommended for that soil type. And then they give the scientific name. And then if with this, I cannot, I could not show scrolling over to the side, but you can also scroll to the side and it gives you the common name and the productivity. The, the, and so we can see with that soil type, we're expecting some little blue stem, uh, the hooded windmill, the different buffalo grass, as well as prions. One thing that you can also look towards the end, it gives you a percent clay at the different levels, percent sand. A lot of information really quick for our producers right there at their hands for a free app. One that uh, a lot of our producers and I like to see. Whenever we go off the soil side, there's also um, apps that are put together. Here's one that was put together by a company. A lot of y'all probably have seen the Crystal X BCS uh, app for body condition scores. Um, for me, I refer a lot of producers here because I like for them to be able to go down and see what uh, what 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 is defined as a body condition score one through nine. A lot of times we talk about it, but it's tough. Uh, this app will actually let you create some records, view existing records uh, from that. A lot of times we use it on the educational side so that I can actually sit there and start showing producers what these different body condition scores. And, and whenever you look at and, and you start scoring the different photos, they can see what a body condition score one cow looks like and progress it through the twos, the threes, the fours, the fives. And then it gives them the option to take a picture and then they can scroll through and, and see where does that cow fit. And if they want to save it, they can. Uh, but for, for me, I use this a lot as an educational tool so that our producers can, can see that. Um, another one that's pretty cool that uh, one of our, uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Megan uh, Clayton, uh, worked to, to work on was the Cow Poop Analyzer app. This was taken off of a publication that uh, Dr. Bob Lyons and Dr. Rick Machen had, had worked with, where you're looking at um, cow patties uh, and, and looking at feces. Uh, looking at the digestibility of it, um, when you open up the cow poop analyzer, it lets you uh, uh, take pictures and cr or create new records. Also look at forage quality descriptions. And one, when you click on that, here's a screenshot of the forage quality description. It shows a picture of the cow patty. And then typically what kind of crude protein and digestibility. And then it gives a written explanation of what that dropping indicates as of what, why it falls between the different levels of digestibility and crude protein from that. Uh, you can also, like I said, set your records where you can pick uh, here where I, we put in herd one, uh, took a picture. Uh, you can score that, um, put a pasture in that you actually had. It will set, uh, it'll tell you the time and the date that you actually took that. Um, cow poop record and then typically like in the notes I can add uh, that that picture was taken on uh, the picture was taken on June the 4th but on May 3rd we went into that pasture and so that was the pasture that we that was the date that we moved in there and still we were having those kind of patties that many that many days later so the cattle were still getting plenty of crude protein in that pasture uh, if you're looking at, at that gives us just another tool there to be able to follow maybe the progression of, of that. Uh, one of the ones that we talk about a lot of is weed ID. Uh, looks like it, being able to identify the ag weed ID. I, I like this app. Um, it is very specific to, to certain uh, commodities and crops, uh, but it works extremely well. And the fact is, and this shows some of the different screenshots where uh, you can actually progress from the first shot weed ID 
identify and compare the image to another plant or browse. A lot of times I actually will browse an image. Now, if somebody sends me an image, I might compare it. But uh, a lot of times I will browse the image by going in there and picking the month that you're at, the location by state. I'll ask you to pull it down by state. Uh, it will identify the crop. Maybe you're in uh, corn or wheat uh, fields, uh, and you identify that crop, and then it will show the weed type. It will show a lot of different images, and you can scroll through the different images, and then if that is it, you can can select that image and it will tell you more about that plant. Another one, as I said earlier, that aqua plants. Uh, looking at the uh, aqua plant app here, you can identify either in a man, uh, do a management plan or look at permits on how to apply. It gives a lot more information along those along those lines. I like this because it identifies the plants. For producers, whether it's an algae, it's a floating plant on top, is it a submerged plant underneath the water, or is it a plant that emerges out of the water? And so as we look at maybe the submerged plants, the next screenshot, it'll, it'll show you some different plants. You can actually click down here on the plant list, and it'll tell you information about that plant and how to control that plant. These are three different screenshots that I took of a plant and what this was is filamentous algae and it gives me a mechanical uh, control option as you scroll down the same screen you can get the biological control or also the chemical control uh, by clicking on that management button right there when you click on the identification of it it shows you actually uh, some of the different pictures with that uh, uh, another great app especially if you have a lot of people that call or if you have pond questions um, or if you have ponds yourself and you wanted to know what's out there in those ponds and how to control it. One of the apps that I use for a lot of producers, one is uh, uh, out of the University of Nebraska. It's their field records of pesticide applications. There are several different uh, apps out there. Uh, as I tell producers, find the one that works. There's some other ones that you saw earlier that have maps that are tied into it. Um, one thing that I like about this one is you can have all your different places, and this is one that on this screenshot I've gone in and I've added some of the different places, and and I you select or you can add a location. Um, as you can see here, the Lensman place or the, the home place, and the, these are the, the existing records of when I sprayed uh, those certain places, and then you look at the next screenshot if i you look back on may 11th uh 2016 i sprayed graze on next uh my product rate the amount total registration number and then this has everything from wind speed direction uh if you want to take photos you can add that it talks about the target plant the pest uh the method of disposal what i used um the target application site that was a Tifton field. All this is information that you can go through and add to your records. What I like about this uh, app is at the end, I can email that app or I, I can email that to myself and have those records emailed or it saves it there in that app. As we look at some other apps that are out there on the wildlife side, uh, uh, another colleague of mine uh, has uh, worked together on the Northern Bio White Management Calendar out of Dr. Jim Cathy's shop, where uh, this is the uh, kind of the, the icon that pops up is this one is right here with uh, shows a little quail there. Um, on the first screen, it pops up and shows just Northern Bob White Management Calendar. Any producer can go through here. And click on a month. And if you want, if they want to decide what to do a certain month, they can click on that month. Click on May. Then uh, what will show up is this screen right here. It talks about what brush sculpting needs to be done that month, what call counts you do, predator management, grazing management, and it takes it throughout the process. This right here, when you clicked on brush sculpting, it gives you the months 
that are best to do the brush sculpting, what sculpting plans can do on the predator management side. They also have hot links to how to do a scent count uh, coping with feral hogs if that's a problem. That will actually hot link to another publication that will. Uh, so these kind of apps are really nice on the wildlife side, just kind of showing some of the diversity from that standpoint. When we start talking about news and marketing, the Ag News Web and Markets, one that I really like, being a producer and having cows myself, if you were listening to me and Pete earlier, uh, this one uh, gives me the live cattle, the feeder cattle. I get a lot of producers in the morning uh, that will meet up with me early in the morning for coffee shop, and uh, they, they want to know where our market, where are our trends. And it's amazing how often I can go back to this and uh, look at real quick maybe new the news what's going on and then i can click on the market center pull up lot livestock markets uh commodities also here in floresville we're in uh energy uh they're wanting to know constantly what that oil price is and then uh really works there are a lot of different ag news apps out there this is one that works for me and hopefully y'all can find one, whether it's this one or one of the others. Um, there's an app out there. Uh, and, and we'll have, uh, like I said, we'll show these uh, PowerPoint. And uh, I will send out a uh, um, list. It'll, it's probably about 50 different apps. Um, and no, it's kind of a starting place. The cool part about doing this talk and, and doing this technology is over the years, I've learned that uh, there are a lot of other apps out there, and as I work one-on-one -on -one with somebody or a group of producers and show them an app, I learn about other apps. And as quick as I might download one, I might delete one out uh, and then check those reviews. Um, if you all have one that uh, you really that you enjoy, email me myself. Uh, uh, I, I'm always available. Uh, yeah, John uh, was asking a question some, if, uh, and, uh, if there's uh, on the on the on the animal uh, health one, is there labels for warmers, for, labeled uh, for goats? And you could show them some. Uh, do we have some questions out there that uh, y'all would have for me? Yes, yes, actually for, for deworming goats. Um, uh, I don't know if there's any for, for, for worming goats, but for deworming goats, um, we, we have uh, uh, some of that. But remember, uh, the, when, we, when we look at the, the Compendium of Veterinary Medicine, it is only the labeled products. And that's um, one thing we're big about is the labels the law. And so... If you are looking for products that might not have label uh, that that are that are not labeled for uh, or, okay, or, or carry that, that's where I guess I'm waiting for questions to come in. Uh, label, label the survey is going to pop up in your browser. Products. Please it's answer the survey. The uh, all responses are anonymous. That, that the information the that we can use. Uh, next thing is uh, we, our next session is going to be July 7th. Uh, Dr. Todd Sink is going to be uh, speaking on aquatic. Weed, actually, uh, aquatic vegetation management, weed management, and it'd be one CEU. So, also, if you're not following us on Facebook, you can follow us on Facebook under facebook.com slash txrange. Yes. Well, thank you for thank you, Brian, for being here. I'm gonna I'm gonna put out. Uh, we're sitting here waiting on more questions. Uh, I see. Uh, there's a question. In, uh, does a and once again, ARGIS like app require a license? The, um, my... uh, no, it does not. It, it uh, um, like I said, it's just a matter of going towards uh, the app store. And downloading loading it, uh, it does not uh, um, re require a license from that standpoint. Um, 
uh, and it and it they have a version that's free. That's okay, what I've got been using. Uh, they do also we've been revamping some websites, and we have a, have a, a new website. Or it's not a new more, website. It just got a different name. It's called um, rangeplants.tamu.edu. Uh, uh, no, you might want to take a look at that. One of my top it's not quite mobile friendly really yet. Really we're working on making it mobile friendly. If I'm going to pop out the survey question, if it, uh, if it blocks up in front of your screen, if you go back and click on your little Adobe icon, you come back to the, to the main screen. Any more questions? Brian, thank you. Uh, thank you very much.